One of the enhancements that you're going to find is a missing tooth provision. So before, there was no provision on there so that if you had a missing tooth um, and you needed correction of that tooth, whether it was for um, a bridge or an implant or ortho work, whatever needed to be done to fix that missing tooth, there was no coverage. So now you do have coverage on that plan, um, on this plan, and so you will be able to have that missing tooth replaced how it needs to be fixed. Also, harmful habits, bruxism is now covered, and that's excessive grinding of the teeth um, or jaw clenching. So that was added to the plan for 2019. Your ortho max was increased to 1,500. Uh, that is the maximum amount that could be paid for orthodontia treatment. So if you had ortho work in the past, the way that ortho works is there is a, a maximum. It's a lifetime maximum. So if it was 1,000 before and now it's 1,500, you now have an additional 500 for anyone who's had work before. And if you have new work that you might need going into 2019, you'll receive that additional 500. Okay. Also, your full mouth panoramic x-rays are going from one every three years to one every five years. Um, you also, you get your bite wings automatically. You get two sets of bite wings on the plan every calendar year. So this is referring to the full mouth x-ray, which is going from the three years to the five years. Okay, so eligibility, you must enroll in the plan during open enrollment, just like all of your other benefits, and the benefits will become effective beginning in January 2019. Once you enroll in the plan, that's the plan that you're in for the year, and you can't make any other changes unless there's a qualifying event that would justify that change. A couple of the tools that we have if you need to get information is this oralfitnesslibrary.com. It gives you a wealth of information. I really encourage you to just take a look before you actually need it just to see what's out there in case something comes up. But you can go into this oral fitness library and there's, um, there's question and answers, there's glossaries of terms, there's a sample explanation of benefits that helps you to understand what's being paid and what your amount is that you have to owe to the dentist once you have services done. Uh, there's different treatment options on there. It has a lot of great information and articles to help you through whatever dental service it is that you need to get more information and to help you when you go to the dentist to know what kind of questions you need to ask to make sure that you're getting the best care possible. In addition, you can register on MetLife's My Benefits portal. You'll also have access to that oral health library. But this is more tailored to you and the plan that you have. And so it can see your claims. So if you need to view your claims, you can go on there. You can print out an ID card, although you don't need one when you're going to the dentist. It will allow you to print one if you feel more comfortable having that. And you can look, search for a provider. And when you search for a provider, what you're going to be looking for is the PDP Plus network. It will ask you what network you're in. And you want to make sure that you choose that one so it shows you the appropriate list of participating dentists for that plan. It's the PDP Plus. Let's go some of the key features on this dental PPO plan. It is a very large network. Um, you won't have trouble finding any, any providers in the network. Um, it is large enough. However, your benefit is a PPO, which means you have in-network and out-of-network benefits. So you do want to pay attention to the difference that you would be paying out of pocket by going to one of our participating dentists. And in the second bullet point there, you see that we have negoti negotiated fees that are typically 15 to 45 percent less than the charges that you're going to find if you were to go to an out-of-network dentist. So it's important that if you um, are moving into this plan and you're currently have a dentist that you've been using that you're going to want to check the network to make sure that they are in in our network. The participating dentists are what we call they're contracted with us uh, so if you call your dentist and are asking if they'll take MetLife that word take MetLife is basically you say will you take money from MetLife and their answer is going to be yes we'll take it from anyone you take if you want to give it to us from. However, you want to make sure that they are a participating dentist. You can use that term or a contracted dentist in order to find out. But the best place to find out if they are is if you can go to MetLife.com or to search on our My Benefits portal. If you're having any sort of service that is over $300 is about the mark that dentists will probably 
tell you that they'd like to do this on their own, is you're going to want to get a pretreatment estimate, just like you would do if you were going and having your car fixed. And that's going to tell you what your out-of-pocket costs are going to be. Okay, we have a customer service um, number you can call, go on phone, fax, online. Um, we have a lot of information that's on the back table back there. There's a packet that has everything that we're talking about today and you can get those phone numbers in there as well. Okay, here we see a highlight of, of your plan and I want to step through what those benefits are and how they work so you're clearly understanding how the PPO functions. So with a PPO, as you heard on the medical, you have a co-insurance, a co-insurance versus a co-pay, which is a flat dollar amount. So with a co-insurance, you're paying a percentage share and MetLife pays a percentage share. And so you see those listed in three different columns here. The first column shows you your types of services, type A, B, and C. The second column shows your in-network benefits and the third column shows your out-of-network benefits. I'm gonna first step through the first column. We categorize the types of services and you'll see different percentages associated with them. So type A services are your preventive type services. Those are your cleanings. Type B are your basic services, fillings, extractions, and type C are more of the major services, dentures, crowns, bridges. If you look to the right, you'll see under preventive care, 100% coverage, whether it's in or out of network. Okay. If you look at that top column on in-network, it says it's 100% it's but of a negotiated fee, whereas out-of-network is of a reasonable and customary fee. So let me just give you a quick overview of what that is. So a negotiated fee is a fee that we've negotiated with that dentist that they will accept as payment in full. They cannot charge over that amount that we've agreed upon with them. So you're paying a percentage of a very defined amount. And based on the type of service that it is, that's what the amount is going to be on that. If it's a filling, it's this. If it's a crown, it's this. So you're paying a percentage of that fee. When you go out of network, it's a percentage based on a reasonable and customary. So we look at what that specific service is. We look at the zip code, that geographical area, and what most dentists are going to charge for that particular service. So it's, it's a fee that's going to end up being, like we said before, 15 to 45% higher than what you'd get as a negotiated fee. And then on top of that, they are allowed to do what's called balance billing, and they can charge the remainder amount of you to get to what they would have charged above, up and above that reasonable and customary amount. Not all dentists will do that additional balance billing, but some will. So it's important to know that difference because when you see on preventive care, it's 100%, so there's no out-of-pocket cost for you unless that dentist is charging doing that balance billing when you go out of network. Okay? But where it comes into even bigger play is, for example, on the basic services. It's 80% coverage. That means we pay 80%, you pay 20% when you're in network. Out of network, it changes, and now it's a 70-30. We pay 70, you pay 30. So that additional percentage there, now instead of you paying 20%, you're paying 30%. But you're paying a higher percentage on a higher amount because it's no longer the negotiated fee if you're in network. It's now that higher percentage on the reasonable and customary rate, plus possibly balanced billing. Okay, so you can see, even though it's just 10%, a lot of people look at this and just say it's only a 10% difference, but you just have to know what your percentage of is. And so it's important to have that distinction, so I like to spend a little bit of time on that. Okay, and because it's a PPO plan, there is a deductible on it, and so you see your deductible there is for type A and B services only. And that's the amount that you have to pay before the plan starts paying its co-share. So it's a $15 for individual and $45 for family if you're in network. And then it increases out of network to $25 for individual and $75 for family. And what that means when we split that out between individual and family is that individual component just applies to you. So even though you're covering your family, you may be covering someone more than just you on the plan, you still only need to meet your individual deductible for yourself and then the plan will start kicking in its co-insurance. So if you're in network, it's $15. So if you go and have a filling done and it costs $100, the first $15 is going to be out of your pocket. The remaining $85 of that filling is now going to be subject to the co-insurance. You pay 20% and the plan will pay 80%. Okay? 
There's an annual benefits maximum on the plan, and this works a little bit differently than the maximum you'll find on a medical plan. On a medical plan, you have an out-of-pocket maximum. That's the most you will pay out-of-pocket. Once you hit that max, then it's covered 100% for you. When it comes to dental, it's a planned maximum. The plan being MetLife, which means once MetLife hits that maximum, MetLife stops paying on the plan. So as we're paying our co-share and you're paying your co-share, once MetLife's expenses hit $2,000, then MetLife stops paying on the plan and the remainder would be out of your pocket. Okay, it is a per person maximum. So each person in your family that's covered gets $2,000 and that's for the calendar year. And it resets again the next year when you enroll. Orthodontia has its own separate maximum. And this maximum is the one that we said was enhanced this year to be $1,500. And that's, again, per person. It's both adult and child ortho on the plan, so adults do have access to this benefit. So once we hit $1,500, then the plan won't pay anymore. And remember that on ortho, it is a lifetime max as opposed to a calendar year max. So you get that one time. But like I said, if you were on the plan before and it was only 1000 max, now you have this additional 500 if you need more work done in this next new year in 2019, you'll get that additional 500 benefit to complete your 1500 lifetime. Uh, the My Benefits portal, we talked about it. You can go on online there. You can see who's covered on your plan, what your plan benefits are, print ID cards, um, look at claims information, look up providers. Like I said, it's tailored to you. If you've never uh, been on it before or this plan is new to you, you need to go on and register. It just takes a couple minutes to go ahead and fill out your personal information regarding your name and all of that, and it'll get you registered into the plan, and then you can access things that are particularly right to you. We also have a mobile app, so everything that we're doing when you're on the go, it's an easy access, especially if you're somebody who's traveling. Often you're going to want to be able to access, access providers that are in the network and, and view them, so it's great to have the app on your phone.